Okay, guys. Now I am going to um, again reintroduce myself because this is for the recording. Um, my name is Dr. Saleh Afridi. I am a clinical psychologist and managing director and co-founder of the Lighthouse Arabia. We have Dr. Tara Wynn, who is one of the co-founders and the clinical director, as well as a clinical psychologist at the Lighthouse Arabia. And then we also have Prasant, who is one of our um, managers at the Lighthouse Arabia and our Jedi when it comes to licensing. So we are going to be talking about what you need in order to be able to practice in the UAE. Now, before I go into that, I wanna just do a really quick introduction as to who I am, what the Lighthouse is, because some of you guys might not know about the Lighthouse. So the Lighthouse is a mental health and wellness practice in Um Sukim, Dubai. We've been around for 10 plus years now, we're on our 11th year. Um, we were one of the first practices of its kind to be opened in the UAE or to be established, I should say. Uh, and we are one of the largest of its kind in, uh, in the region. We have over 30 mental health clinicians that include psychologists, counselors, um, neuropsychologists, occupational psychologists, speech and language therapy, um, and like I said, psychiatry as well. So it is a medical clinic. Uh, we do have nurses on our staff as well for um, psychiatry. We serve all ages, whether it's children, adults, adolescents, couples. We work heavily with the corporate sector. We have a lot of different support groups uh, that are running about 22 of them. We also are the only um, um, the only business, the only practice in the UAE to be able to certify people with the internationally acclaimed mental health first aid from Australia. So that's one of our badges that we are very, very proud of. Uh, we definitely have community at our heart. Um, in, in most ways, we are a social enterprise with a huge mission and agenda for uh, social service while we operate you know, our private practice um, and do our four fee uh, clients. So that is what differentiates the Lighthouse from other practices is that we are, um, we have a very big social agenda. And that means that everyone that works at the Lighthouse is giving in some way of their time to the community, whether it's through support groups, education, webinars, um, uh, articles, our social media, which is quite big. We have over 250,000 followers over our different platforms. So this is how we actually are very invested in destigmatizing and um, promoting mental health awareness and mental health literacy here in the region. So that's who we are. And so under my belt, I have 14 years in the UAE of working with um, professionals going through all the different licensing processes. A lot has changed over the years. Um, and so Tara and I are here sort of going to, you know, we can track the whole journey between DHA, CDA, DHCC. And that's what I will bring to you guys today. And a lot of times people wonder, is this a good time for me to move to Dubai? Or is it a good time for me as a psychologist to practice in Dubai? And I would definitely say that yes, if you are anywhere in the world, now is the time to move to the UAE and practice in Dubai. Um, I think there is, um, we've done a lot of work We've done a lot of work and the government has been absolutely open and promoting of whether it was a happiness agenda and now the well-being and emotional health agenda, but we are de uh, decreasing the stigma because a lot of times people are like, do people even go to see therapists here? And I would say, yes, they do. The Lighthouse has a very long waiting list of people actually of being able to see a mental health professional. So there is a shortage of highly qualified mental health professionals here in the UAE. It's across the board around the world, but definitely in the UAE, we are, um, we're, um, in, we have an increased demand for these services and not enough qualified professionals. Um, 
I would, there are also people who are concerned that, you know, is it like, you know, everybody sort of running rogue in and, and doing whatever they want? Actually, some of the highest standards, and I'm from the US, I'm licensed in um, the United States as well as with DHA. And I would say some of the highest professional and ethical standards are mandated of people here or professionals here in the UAE. And some of the things that we are implementing now, the DHA is implementing, are really in um, at the at the cutting edge of whether it's uh, teletherapy or whether it's. Um, it's the way we document, it's the way we, if the way we're being regulated, I would really say it's quite cutting edge. Um, and, and, and it's quite sophisticated where the regular the regulatory bodies are um, working very collaboratively with the people such as us, which are private practices and stakeholders to really shape mental health policy and resources. And you know, when I moved here, I really, really had a passion for advocacy. I really had a passion. And so did Tara. We both came from places. She came from the UK. I came from the US, where we really were just very invested in community service, but also advocating and shaping mental health policy. And I remember when I first moved here, Tara was here just a little bit before before I was, but she was actually working on the ethics of practicing psychology in um, the, the UAE. And now, um, since then, we've worked with lots of focus groups, with the Executive Council, um, informing policy with DHA, public policy. Um, and so it's been really, you feel so, um, re uh, it's so rewarding to be able to shape something, um, you know, from the ground up, basically. Basically, um, the work here is absolutely varied. It's challenging. I don't know. Some of you guys might follow me on Instagram. You will know that I was in like 18 different locations today. But as a psychologist, um, you are able to do all the different things associated with that, whether it's writing, whether it's speaking, public speaking, whether it's serving clients from all different backgrounds, um, what local clients, uh, English speaking clients, mostly that's what we see at the lighthouse, but also Arabic speaking clients and different languages uh, that are coming and, and, and different backgrounds and different socioeconomic status, different religious backgrounds. So it's really such a diverse country, uh, diverse city, and, and you're actually having access to all of that kind of, um, um, all of those types of clients, as well as all different types of presentations. So we are a private practice. We are an outpatient private practice. So um, we see, you know, the normal range of um, diagnoses within our practice, but we also see quite clinical cases as well. Um, be, you know, and because we have psychiatrists on our team. So you literally get the whole range. So whether you want to work with personality disorders, whether you just want to do insight oriented work, whether you want to work with people that are struggling with affective disorders or anxiety disorders or OCD, um, working with children, working with couples, you literally get it across the board. And I would say that right now we are at a tipping point, um, a point of inflection. I would say that you, uh, we really are in need for innovation and in service design. This is what me and my team are talking about all the time. You know, how can we bring our services to bigger um, groups rather than this one-on-one -on -one, um, experience because we might not be able to serve one-on-one. -on -one. So this is where we have some of our support groups coming up, but also we are creating DBT groups and evidence-based therapeutic spaces as well. So, um, but this is, you know, we're at that place right now. So it actually is quite exciting to be in the UAE as a psychologist right now. You know, I always tell people that when Tara and I started the lighthouse, we were really one of a handful of psychologists in this country and like nobody really knew what was going on when it comes to mental health, you know, uh, when it, well, at least not in, in um, speaking publicly about it. So obviously people knew about it, but it wasn't such a public conversation. And I remember writing articles about this thing uh, where kids can also struggle with mental health conditions. And that was such a new thing. But now the conversation is 
has come so far where we're talking about real issues and real difficulties. Um, and 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 I, I feel like you know we had a we had a big hand um, in that. Um, by having those conversations in in the different domains that we had access to, whether it was schools or companies or social media. So that's what I would say about working here. Um, when it comes to licensing process, uh, this is why you guys are all here. It can actually be really difficult, guys. It's it's, you know, even us, I have two other people here, you know, fielding some of these questions. We are literally going back to authorities every month, every other month, um, just to get, get data as to what are the new changes. Now, remember guys, the UAE is a very young country. It's just a few years older than I am. So some of these systems are forming um, now. And so, I'm not, uh, I'm not surprised and I'm not frustrated in that sense um, that, oh, why is this changing so often? I expect it actually that it's changing that often, but I can imagine from the outside, it can feel very daunting that I don't know how to navigate um, these different bodies and these different qualifications and who do I go to and who do I apply to? And but um, so there are multiple licensing bodies and there is the DHA and there's the CDA. So you need to remember these two names, but under the DHA, you will have DHCC, which is the Dubai Healthcare City. OK, so I'm going to be using these three a lot. CDA, DHA, DHCC. And I think if you have a lack of familiarity with the local authorities, with what qualification applies to what authority, you could get stuck or get rejected because, um, you know, clinical psychologists can't apply to community development authority. But if you are a psychologist and you apply to a uh, clinical psychologist and you apply to community development authority and get rejected, you might think that you are, you know, your license is being rejected, but actually, if you went to DHA and applied, you might get accepted, or you might get licensed there. So it really is about, you know, understanding who, um, what these different um, licensing um, authorities can actually license under their, um, you know, under their um, regulatory body. And I think there are holdups in parts of the process that are not necessarily related to CDA or DHCC or DHA. They're actually third party contractors or governmental bodies. So authentication and equalization and um, your um, uh, 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 personal source verification, your data flow, all of these things are supposed to be handled by third party contractors or governmental bodies. And then you submit these documents to the licensing body. So it actually is not a licensing body issue, but other things that can actually delay the process. So there are many steps to before your application is actually even complete. Um, and to be fair, there are, uh, a lot of unclear and changing licensing processes, like I said. So for example, the Dubai Healthcare City since 2002 was a separate entity, where now um, since October 2021, it came under DHA authority. So that was a big shift for people. And that just happened a few months ago, guys. And so there are things that are changing often. Um, and so what I hope to do today is to really bring you um, information uh, about the different licensing bodies and uh, which one you should apply to based off of your qualifications. I want to outline the licensing requirements and the processes for each body as well as offer advice and tips to make your licensing journey smooth and fast as possible. Okay, um, so that's what we are going to do today. And I can see many of you guys are already asking lots of questions. So people say, well, you know, I'm going to, um, I'm thinking about applying to the UAE, um, but, you know, I've got to settle some things and then I, I might move next year. When should I start working on the licensing process? 
you want to start today because the licensing lead time can actually be really long, guys. And early steps in some of the licensing applications will help you complete a lot of it while you're still in your home country. All or majority of the licensing application steps um, can be completed before you receive an offer letter. So you don't have to have a job. You don't have to have an offer letter. You can actually get a lot of that work done and you will actually be a far more attractive candidate to the employers because you already have your equalization, um, your uh, equivalency letter. OK, so this is when when someone comes to us and says, I already have my DHA um, equivalency or I'm already a CDA licensed person. Um, we are going to be looking at that candidate with a whole level of seriousness. Of course, we're looking at all candidates with that, but we really get super excited when we get someone who's done that work. It shows your motivation. It shows that you're committed. It shows that you are wanting to move here and not just sort of dabbling with the idea. So, of course, um, employers want to see that. I can tell you that I would want to see that. <laughs> I speak for Tara as well. So let's talk about Dubai Healthcare City, okay? So I'm now going to be talking about these three bodies just so you guys know. Now, Dubai Healthcare City is a free zone situated in central Dubai. So if you look here, this is Dubai Healthcare City. This is the Burj Khalifa, and this is the Palm. And um, right now, the lighthouse is situated here. So not very far from the lighthouse currently, um, or you know, central Dubai, which is where lighthouse is, is DHCC. Um, now, DHCC, like I said, from 2002 to 2021, it used to be governed as a separate regulatory body. In 2021, it became um, governed by DHA, the Dubai Health Authority. So um, it could change, we don't know, uh, but for now, this is where it stands, okay? Um, and I, there's no plans on it changing, but I'm just saying this is because it's only even six months old that it's under this regula um, regulatory body. Um, there are some um, types of degrees that um, can only work in DHCC. When you get a license from DHCC, you can only work in DHCC. You see that little square right here? You cannot work outside of this zone. If you have a license from other bodies, you can work anywhere in Dubai. DHCC only in this little square right here, okay? Now, candidates that get licensed by, the, uh, by DHA or CDA can usually get a DHCC license. So let's just say a clinical psychologist or a counseling psychologist or an educational psychologist or a social worker or a counselor, um, any of these guys can get licensed by DHCC, but not everyone that gets licensed in DHCC can get licensed by DHA or CDA. So for some people like postgraduate diplomas, um, uh, yeah, mostly postgraduate diplomas, uh, the fastest route or, or the only route might be DHCC. Also psychotherapists might actually only be licensed in DHCC, but it also might be a faster route for people such as um, counseling psychologists, educational psychologists, social workers, anyone that is licensed by CDA, it might be a faster option for them to get licensed by DHCC. Now, the only thing about DHCC is that there's not a lot of mental health practices in DHCC. I think there's less than a handful. The Lighthouse will soon be starting a practice or opening a practice in DHCC. So we are, um, you know, we're about to cut the ribbon soon, um, but we will be opening a practice in DHCC to capture a lot of those um, people that are interested in working in the UAE 
are interested in working in Dubai and have the DHCC license, find it easier to get licensed by DHCC and can only work within DHCC. So they would still be able to work with the lighthouse. So that's Dubai Healthcare City. Now, like I said, there are three licensing bodies, okay? And you look at DHA and you look at DHCC, but remember, they're licensed by Dubai Healthcare Authority. Only work in DHCC if you are licensed by DHCC, even though your license will say Dubai Healthcare Authority. But it will say only for license in, uh, only for practice in DHCC. So it can't be that, oh, I got my license in, by DHA, now I can go practice anywhere. No, your license will actually stipulate that you can only work in DHCC. So if you're a clinical psychologist, if you are a health psychologist or a neuropsychologist, you can work under DHA anywhere in the UAE, okay? Um, uh, anywhere in Dubai. And you can also work in DHCC. If you are a DHC, um, um, if you are uh, a counselor or any allied health or social worker, et cetera, you can get licensed by DHA, but you would only be allowed to work in DHCC or you could get licensed by CDA. So all mental health professionals other than clinical or health or neuro. So school psychologists, I saw someone who had a question about school psychology, educational psychology, et cetera. You can get licensed by CDA and then you can work anywhere in Dubai or you get licensed for DHCC. There's a difference between CDA and DHCC because of the third party contractors it can take up to eight to 12 months. We've had people sometimes 18 to 24 months in the process of equalization, which I will tell you guys about. So it can be a very long process, not with CDA itself, but the people um, that are equalizing your degrees or um, you know, doing the data flow or the PSV, that can take sometimes a lot longer. Um, and, and DHA and DHCC do not require you to get equalization for your degree. So that is the big main difference between DHA, DHCC, and then CDA. DHA, DHCC does not require equalization where CDA does require the Ministry of Education to have your degree equalized. So that's why the time is actually so different in getting these people licensed. So there are a lot of mental health professionals that say, I wanna work somewhere else in Dubai, but the fastest way for me to work is gonna be at DHCC. And so they apply for their DHCC license while they are in the equalization process for CDA. Okay, with the Ministry of Education. So, and then eventually in a year or whenever, it actually could be that they can, um, they can now work anywhere else, but they, they want to start earning, they want to move here, they want to move and work faster. DHCC would be that option. The cost is not that different, plus or minus. Um, and it doesn't include like equalization and other types of things that you might have to do. This is actually just the licensing cost. So there could be several costs prior to the licensing, but it is somewhere, you know, in the range of two to 4,000 um, dirhams when it comes to um, getting your license. Now for all three licenses, you are gonna need a bachelor's and a master's or a doctorate. And you need transcripts for all these, okay? So you, you need to have your bachelor's degree uh, authenticated, your master's degree. And if you have a doctorate degree, then you wanna get that authenticated. You wanna also get transcripts for your bachelor's, for your master's, and for your doctorate. 
these need to be original. So you do need to go to your university and they, they have these sealed transcripts, which then you need to take to, um, you know, uh, one of these bodies that actually authenticates it through the different ministries in your country, the UAE ministry, et cetera. And so that all needs to happen. So you may want to Google authentication of legal documents and you will know what that means in your country. Um, you need work experience certificates. So everywhere in the UAE for to be a psychologist, you must have experience. For CDA, it's one year. For DHA slash DHCC, it's two years experience in, you know, in another country. And those letters of experiences must say the date as well as what your title was when you were working. So she worked as a psychologist from this date to this date. So these are called work experience certificates. It's not a, um, a formal thing, it's a letter from your employer. You also need active professional license or registration. So there are, you know, for, uh, for example, in England, you would get, uh, you're registered with um, the Br British Psychologists Association. Um, in the US, we have licensing bodies for each state. So the all, all degrees um, or, or all licenses need to see that you have a license. Now, if your country does not have a registration or a license, then you do need a letter from the Ministry of Health of that country that says that there is no licensing body for psychologists um, and this person you know, is a psychologist. So you do need to get a letter from Ministry of Health. We had someone come um, you know, many, many, many years ago. I actually don't know what the, what the situation is in Kuwait, but they came from Kuwait. There was no you know, uh, licensing body or registry for psychologists. So they had to go to the Ministry of Health to get that letter. And I know that um, there are some people that are struggling from Oman because they don't have a licensing body. So you would need to just go to the Ministry of Health to say there is no licensing body or professional licenses for psychologists in this country. You also need a good standing certificate. So for the U.S. and for um, you know other parts of the world, you would need to go to your licensing body and say that there is no malpractice against you. For the UAE, um, you also need a police certificate if you've been here longer than six months. Now, the good standing certificate is only good for six months. So you, this is one of the last things you'll do before you leave your home country or when you're applying, because I can start doing all of the other things and I can get the good standing certificate, but then I apply. I, um, and, and I submit my application eight months, let's just say, because it takes me eight months to get all these documents together, um, that certificate is now expired. So now I have to go get another one. So you want to just keep that in mind that it's only good for six months. You need a passport photo and then a passport copy. So you do need a passport in order for you to get licensed um, in the UAE. Now, I talked to you guys about the CDA process sometimes taking 8 to 12, 12 to 18, 18 to 24 months. And that is not because of the CDA. It is actually because one of their requirements, which is this middle one here, the blue, is the equalization and verification. Now, all degrees require verification, but like I said, only CDA requires equalization. Now, before you get a degree equalized, you also have to get attestation and legalization of that degree. So you need to check the requirements in your country because they vary. So you just want to Google attestation of legal documents in Pakistan, attestation of legal documents in the UK or et cetera. And each country will either have companies that will help you do it. So you don't have to do the runaround um, or they will just give you a, a path on how you can do that. And you want to include all of your degrees. Um, now for equalization, they want your, uh, they will only equalize your 
master's degree, but they do want your bachelor's and they want the transcripts for your bachelor's as well as for your master's. Um, and so while they're only equalizing the master's from the Ministry of Education, that Ministry of Higher Education, and they say that it takes 30 days, but like I said, it can really take a long time uh, depending on, I'm, I'm not sure what it depends on but for us uh, the experience has been that we've been in that process um, 18 months sometimes to get that ministry of education equalization um, and that's why the dhcc license can be quite appealing to people that are not clinic or, or health psychologists and then you are also going to be submitting all of those attested documents to data flow there's a link on the CDA that connects you to Dataflow where you submit all of your bachelor's, your letters, employment certificates, a good standing certificate, et cetera, into Dataflow. And what they do is they call and they verify. Now, this process used to take 30 days, but we're finding in the recent past that it's been taking a lot longer um, since, since COVID. There's been a lot, it's the data flow process has been actually um, a bit drawn out uh, than it used to, but it, before it was actually quite fast and I'm hoping that it will eventually go back to being, um, you know, maybe four to six weeks, I would say. Six weeks is a good number. Once you have these things in place, then you submit your license application and you can submit the application through email to CDA. And I, you know, and I, I know personally that they are very quick to respond. You have to sit for a written exam in the UAE in person which is different from DHA, which you can sit anywhere in the world, uh, most places in the world, I should say. Uh, but in, for CDA, you have to fly in and you must sit here and it only happens four times a year. That's another reason why a lot of people um, feel like, you know, the DHCC option is a good way for me to get started while I work on my CDA license. So once you receive the initial approval, after you've passed the exam, um, you will then submit your UAE offer letter to which they will then release your license to your employer. In other countries, the person holds the license and they can work out of their home or they can work online or they can work anywhere. In the UAE, you are legally not allowed to work from your home, from online, um, and, and see clients locally, um, uh, and that's considered illegal in this country. You must be linked to a clinic. So that's why they don't release the license to you, they release the license to your employer. You basically say you've been approved. And then once you've been approved, you go there with the offer letter and they release that, oh, okay, the lighthouse offered you a job. We're going to release the license to the lighthouse. So then the lighthouse holds your license um, while you are practicing in, um, in Dubai. And uh, once you've done that, you take an oath online and they only scheduled when a few people, you know, there's a few number of uh, CDA applicants combined and then they might give you a date for the oath online. So it's a little bit of a, little bit of a lengthy process. Um, I think if you do have a company that sort of helps you through the process when it comes to attestation, um, that might make it less daunting. But like I said, it is quite a process, especially the equalization with the Ministry of Higher Education. Now, the DHA and CDA application is, um, like I said, it doesn't have the equalization process. So you start by going on their website, which is DHA, and you complete this online assessment to check if you even meet the DHA requirements and the professional qualification requirements. So it's pretty straightforward. Do you have two years? Did you, you know, uh, do you have an active license? Did you get your degree in psychology, et cetera? So it'll take you through that. And then you submit your documents online 
after you receive this PQR. So once you've filled out that PQR and they say, yes, you can start submitting, you get a code. And that code, you then submit, um, um, you, you start the data flow and the PSV process, okay? And this can take anywhere from four to six weeks. So right now, I would say probably it's taking about six, um, I would say it's taking about eight to 12 weeks when it comes to um, the data flow uh, process, um, because I don't know, it, it, like I said, they have to call all the employers and make sure that everything is in place. They're actually verifying did she, what you said is actually the truth. So they call your employer, did she really work here from this time to this time? So it actually can be quite a lengthy process and it's a very human process. So um, it, it does take a bit of time. Now, this is going on um, and you will, you know, your data flow, your primary source verification are going on. Um, but what happens is that you, you can jump right into this process because attestation, legalization, equalization, and oath are not required by the DHA. Now that will save you a lot of time, right? Because that literally could take, you know, sometimes, like I said, it can take up to 12 to 18 months to do some of this other stuff where here you have your degree, you have your experience, et cetera. And then you can just submit to DHA um, for um, either DHCC, anyone that is not health or clinical or DHA if you're clinical and health. Then you take the Prometric exam and it can be taken throughout the year at any of your testing centers in, in different countries. Most countries have a testing center. I think there was one or two and maybe Tara can lean in on um, at the end. Um, there were a couple countries that didn't have it, but most countries that we engage with um, when it comes to licensing have had a testing center. Okay, and then you take a, um, an oral exam if required. Only, I think neuropsychologists require oral exams, but clinical and health psychologists don't require oral exams. They might change that, but right now it actually is just a written exam. Um, and it's really, you know, psychology 101. It's like when you studied for your board exams in the country you were in. Um, and so that's the type of stuff that you need to have on your board exam. There's no sort of study guides or anything like that for people um, to take these exams. But it, 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 if you know, if you've been practicing for a few years, you would probably need to go back and review some of your board exam stuff. But it really is mostly that stuff. Um, it's not very difficult. I don't know anyone who has um, not passed. Uh, I think one person in my career here um, that I know that did not pass, but they probably didn't take it as seriously as they should have. And then once you've taken all of this, you submit um, your application and, and, um, uh, and in the notes section, if you are applying for DHCC, you would say applying for DHCC eligibility. So you must write that in the notes section. Please guys, um, uh, it would need to be put um, in the notes section. This is where a lot of people are not um, doing that and it doesn't really indicate that in the application. So I'm giving you an insight here that write it in the DHCC notes uh, write it in the notes section, um, a counseling psychologist applying for DHCC eligibility letter, okay? Then you receive your eligibility letter, and then you must submit uh, an offer letter from your employer to which they will release your um, license when you are ready to start working. So for example, we have four or five psychologists now at the Lighthouse who are living in other countries who have their eligibility letter. They, when, when they come to Dubai and we submit their malpractice and we submit their offer, uh, offer letter, it will then be released to us and they will be ready to you know, rock and roll when it comes to doing mental health practice here. So this is a little bit smoother and faster process. Um, and um, in the end, you will get the eligibility letter. <clears throat> so what can you do to ensure a smoother process? I think for now, if you're in your home country, contact all your universities 
and contact your past and present employers and get the documentation, okay? Get the documentation that says she was employed from this state to this state. Um, contact your universities, get your degree and get your transcript, official transcript, not non-official guys, official transcript. Um, start the attestation process and the legalization process before you leave your country. It's so much faster and better. Now, I know that DHA doesn't require you to have your documents attested, but I would recommend get them attested anyways while you're there because that's what I did. I attested my documents and sometimes you need it for other things, right? Um, and so it's just good to do it. Um, but you don't need to do it as a DHA, DHCC applicant, but I would just recommend that if you are, for example, as someone who is not a health neuro or clinical psychologist, um, and I, I would recommend that you get your documents attest attested because you might decide that you want to work somewhere else other than DHCC. And then you have to work on getting a license later and getting attestation later. So I would just say, do it now and start the CDA licensing process as soon as you land. And you know that can take its while while you work in DHCC, okay? Make sure that your name is written in the exact same format and spelling on all your documentation. Guys, this causes a lot of hiccups. So, if you've had a name change, you want to go through that process and people will take you through the legalization and attestation. They will tell you there's a document you get that formerly known as this person. So if you changed your name, that would be um, an important document for you to have as well. But make sure that the spelling is the same. So we had some people who, um, you know, on their license had, you know, the shorter version of their name but on their degree was the longer version of their name. And it was like, no, you need to now go to your licensing body and say, can you please put my official name on there because I'm going to apply to the UAE. And so it really needs to be similar because then you're going to, you're really going to come up against some walls here. So it's better to just do it now. Make sure that your job titles and employment dates are on all your work certificates. Okay. So um, uh, Dr. Saleha Afridi worked as a clinical psychologist from April um, 4th, 1997 to, you know, May 19th, 2007, whatever. It needs to say those dates on there because they need to know that you had this um, work experience. Um, it's not necessarily a recommendation letter. Um, they can write some nice things about you, but it really is like a paragraph where it's just saying she worked here. Yes. And then the primary source verification guys are going to be calling those guys and saying, did she really work here? Or making us fill out some forms that say that did she really work here? For example, people that have left the lighthouse, we get primary source verification calls and um, certificates that we have to fill out for people that left here. Um, also for doctorate degrees, if you don't have the required years of experience um, after your doctorate completion, only submit your master's degree for the license. So I had a master's degree and I have a doctorate degree and I had two years post master's, but maybe one year's post doctorate. So I can apply as a master's level psychologist, um, even though I'm a doctor, um, and that will move your process along faster. So that's another thing for you guys to consider, especially for doctoral level. Or there are people who got a degree, you know, and then they worked for four years and then they went back. So just submit that part of it um, and don't try to confuse them with your doctorate degree. Um, you are a psychologist and you are working here and you have that title, but um, but it, it will probably get you stuck in the process a little bit if you are um, trying to um, apply as a doctorate when you don't have the two years past qualification. So some of these questions you guys messaged me. Um, so can I start the licensing process before I have UAE employment letter? I answered that. You do not need to have an employment letter. You just need to have... Um, uh, you need to have a UAE offer letter if you want your license released. So you will get the eligibility letter and then 
um, when the employer employer uh, employer um, submits their offer letter and visa and malpractice, then the license will get issued to us. Okay, you do not get the license. We get the license, and you practice under the lighthouse um, license. Um, do you need to be in the UAE to start the licensing process? You do not need to be in the UAE for CDA people, but you do need to submit um, uh, for the equalization process. You need to either show that you had been in the country or that you have a conditional offer letter from that country. I don't understand it, but you they need to know that you visited here but you can actually submit the equalization document um, from overseas. But you do need to come here for the exam, for CDA. For DHA, you could be sitting wherever you are and you can actually do the whole process without even setting foot in the UAE. Like I said, it makes the process a whole lot faster and smoother. Um, why are my transcripts required? Um, well, because they want to make sure that majority of your coursework was related to psychology and that you were on the ground in person in your um, university. Online degrees are not accepted, guys. So if they see that it was an online course and most of your courses were online, you will have a very difficult time getting licensed in the UAE. They have not yet recognized online degrees. Um, and so it really is that do they, do you, are you in person um, and are you studying psychology and is it related to psychology? So they do need to see your transcripts. The work certificate, I just told you it's an official letter uh, by your employers. And at least for the last two years, they want to see that. Um, what is a professional license or registration? Um, it's just basically in the country that you live in, either you're registered with a psychology body or you have a license by a psychology body. Um, and it must be valid at the time of application. So they basically um, don't want people who just got a degree and then moved to the UAE. They actually want you to have a degree, work in that country, and then move to the UAE. Um, you can get work experience here in the UAE, but only in certain hospitals. So unlike the US or the UK, where you can get supervised by, um, you know, a clinician who's been out of, you know, in practice two years or more, here you cannot do that. You have to go to certain clinics or hospitals to get, um, um, you know, um, uh, what do you call this, um, work experience, and there are very few. So if you're in your home country, get those two years under your belt would be my recommendation. Um, good standing certificate, I already told you guys about that. It's only valid for um, six months. And it's just basically that you don't have any malpractice cases against you. There are people who help with these processes. Um, they don't help with CDA, I don't think. Um, unless PK, you can correct me once we go online with questions. Um, but uh, these are um, these are people that can help at least with the DHA, DHCC process. Um, and then we also have people uh, who have gone through our application process and that are hired that we help navigate that process. And Prasant actually is the one who helps facilitate that. And, you know, on a weekly basis, we're going to these government authorities. Um, I think Prasant even went today um, to some of them because this is just part of our process of helping the candidates that apply to us and um, want to work in the, in Dubai and how do we help them get licensed faster. And so we're really excited about the DHCC uh, branch and uh, with the DHA branch that we now have. So we have, a, our, we have all three psychologists working for us, the DHCC bodies now, as well as the CDA and the DHA. So now I would be very happy to take questions um, and Tara and um, Prasant are going to help me if I can't remember or, or if I don't know the answer. Um, so let's see. 
So do we know which clinics or hospitals would be acceptable? I think there are just so few. I actually don't know. Tara, do you know? Um, actually, there is no list that's been provided, but for the CDA, the British University of Dubai provides certain training for those candidates who have a postgraduate qualification but have not um, uh, gained any relevant experience. And you would have to approach the British University of Dubai for what their training is, how long it is. And I don't believe that it's just a one size fits all. I think they give advice on a case per case. Okay, so there's no, um, and, and hopefully this will change where a lot of other, um, you know, we're working on trying to get our license to become a training facility. So that's one of our top agendas at the Lighthouse. So you could be working under supervision. It hasn't happened yet, but um, we are really hoping that it does. It's a big agenda of ours. Um, so another person asked, um, India doesn't have a licensing system for master's degree in psychology and also doesn't provide a good standing certificate. Um, so I chose package three in DHA, which only requires educational certificates. Am I following the correct process? Um, um, Prasant, can you comment on this? Because I'm pretty sure there are some license, um, there are some people that get licensed as master's level from India. Yes, doctor. It's true. Like if there is no licensing body, like we said earlier, you have to get a letter <clears throat> from the Ministry of Health in India to um, explain the reason or suggest that there is no regulations um, to regulate um, uh, clinical psychology or psychology or any part of psychology title. So with that letter, we can approach um, um, the health authority to um, get the license. Yes. So, um, so yeah, as I mentioned, um, that you would need to get a letter from the Ministry of Health. So I know India has one of those. Um, and so you would need to go to them and um, say, have them mention that I, you know, there is no licensing body and there's no regulatory body for psychologists. And this person has a degree in psychology. So um, that, that would, um, you know, um, that would be how it works. So um, there's another question in the US, there's a spectrum of mental health professionals. What of those are currently recognized in the UAE and any future updates on this? So, I mean, there are so many different type of psychotherapists that are licensed in the US. So for example, an analyst would be considered a psychotherapist. Um, a postgraduate diploma would be considered a psychotherapist. Um, those types of therapists uh, are licensed by CDA or DHA, but you need to stipulate DHCC in the notes section. So psychotherapists can get licensed in um, as long as you have a two years degree or more and you have that two years experience, you would be able to um, apply for a license here. Now, I don't know what those range are, but if you're like, um, but if you've gotten like a certificate, then probably not. It needs to be a master's degree or a master's degree equivalent. I know, for example, somatic experiencing has a certificate. That does not count. You cannot practice as a somatic therapist unless you have a master's degree on which on top of that, you got somatic experiencing. Um, so a lot of people had questions, uh, questions about uh, work experience in the UAE, um, like I, I've already answered some of those. Um, can you explain the pay scale for both licenses? Is there a difference in the pay? So for, uh, when it comes to um, licensed as a, uh, a CDA or DHA, no. It, it's not, um, there's no difference in the pay that if you got licensed by CDA, it would be less than if you were licensed by DHA. I will, um, but masters and doctorate do have a little bit of a difference between the two. I wouldn't say it's so great uh, that, you know, it's uh, exponential. I wouldn't say that it is, but there is a difference in how much uh, you could make. However, 
it does matter how much experience you have. So a new doctorate, so example, if a doctorate only has two, three years experience, uh, they would, um, you know, and a master had, you know, 15 years experience, they might make equivalent. So it's not necessarily related only to your degree, but also to your experience. Um, Tara, do you see any questions here that you can answer? Actually, yes, I, I wanted to. Um, there's a range of questions about the experience that you need um, to be able to be licensed in Dubai. And there were some specific questions on does the experience within the degrees um, count and it doesn't. It is only post qualification when you finished your master's or your postgraduate diploma or your doctorate, it is the experience afterward that counts. And actually, it can be a range of either two or three years by different licensing authorities. Other questions, guys, were um, more around, uh, you know, kind of can, can the experience be um, broken up? Um, does it have to be continuous in one organization? It does not have to be continuous, but I would really um, advise that, you know, bits and pieces of experience strung together, maybe some like um, in different countries, this just makes the whole data flow, your um, PSV process much more complex. So expect that. And it's, it doesn't stand against you. Well, all, it, all it is is it's managing your own expectations. Well, I think that might make it a little bit more tricky or a longer process, but you either need two or three years experience. It can be in different places. Um, however, it is just really important um, that whoever employed you will verify that you were employed there. And a number of people in the past, what's happened is they say, well, that clinic closed down or, or this happened or that happened. Um, you just have to go as far as you can to find somebody who will verify your employment during that period. Um, I have a question here that says someone is a registered pro psychologist towards their two years experience, after which I can use the title clinical psychologist. Will I need to you? Uh, will I need to work two years as a clinical psychologist before I apply? No, it's two years post qualification. So not to basically when you use that title is when you can start working at the lighthouse, uh, not at the lighthouse in Dubai. And <laughs> we are hiring. Um, but you, no, it's two years post your uh, graduation. Okay, so that person, and you would not apply to CDA, you would apply to DHA, clinical psychologist, health psychologist, neuropsychologist apply to DHA okay mm -hmm. do not apply to CDA mm -hmm. so someone asked um, they're in they're from the US they have their master's in social work but they didn't sit for the state licensing exam do you think I should sit for it hundred percent you should sit for it and you should maintain your US license. It just makes you a more attractive candidate and it will help you push through even some of the, you know, um, some of the difficulties we might encounter in the licensing process. If you just have an active license in the United States. So for sure, I would mention, um, um, I, would, I would definitely sit for that exam. Do what you gotta do and go for it. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, how much do psychologists in Dubai earn on average? Um, I think if you take on a healthy caseload um, and depends on which clinic you work at. So I can only speak about the lighthouse and people who have a good work-life balance. So maybe they're working 25 hours a week. Um, they can probably, Tara, would you say about $10,000 to $12,000 a month um, yeah. that you can make in um, if, you, if you maintain a healthy practice or you have other like training courses that you might be doing. So anywhere between 10 to 15,000 is probably a reasonable expectation um, per month. Um, and, and that is not something that is easy to do in other parts of the world um, when you are, you know, two, four, five years out. Um, so it is, uh, it's a, definitely a great incentive for people um, to, um, to work. 
So someone mm. said counseling psychologist, should they apply to DHA or CDA? Guys, I just went over this. <laughs> counseling psychologists will apply to CDA. And that means you can work anywhere in Dubai. Or you will apply to DHA. In the notes section, you will put applying for DHCC eligibility. Okay. And when you do that, you can only work in DHCC. And like I said, there's only four, four or five clinics in DHCC. So it does narrow your opportunities, but the lighthouse is one of those places um, that, you can, um, that you can apply to if you are looking for DHCC now. Um, Sally, oh, can, can I add more? something? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say for the Dubai Health Authority, um, they license clinical, as we've said so clearly, they license health psychologists, they license neuropsychologists, they also license forensic psychologists and occupational psychologists. There's actually nine categories. Um, I also believe there is a category that they've named child and adolescent psychologists, but what you would really need to do is understand exactly what that means um, according to the DHA, but they have created nine categories, um, but these are the most common degrees that we, we have um, experienced, clinical health, neuro, forensic, occupational. Um, yeah. <clears throat> doctor, um, except health license, health and neuropsychology, all other goes to CDA. Even um, if it's under DHA, it's going to direct back to CDA. What is that? Say that again, PK. Um, the psychology list that uh, Dr. Tara mentioned, mm -hmm. um, like child or counseling, educational, forensic, only um, clinical health and uh, neuropsychologies issued by DHA and rest will be under CDA. But unless they are DHCC unless you put it in the notes section. Yes, yes. Yes. So you must, if you are applying to DHCC, you must put in the notes section, applying to DHCC eligibility. They will refer you to CDA and it will prolong the process. So put it in really big cap letters that I'm applying for DHCC qualification. And once you have that DHCC qualification letter or um, eligibility letter, then you can apply to the different clinics in DHCC only. Um, so let's see, um, I think we've answered a lot of these questions. Um, would you have any suggestions on where to look for therapist jobs? I think guys at this point, every clinic is hiring, um, including the lighthouse. So I would just go to mental health clinics in the UAE and then apply to that. I think it's really important to consider the type of culture you want to work in because, you know, it's not like working in other parts of the world. I think here your employer has a bigger impact on your well-being and your energy and your mm -hmm. engagement with your work because you're away from your family, you're away from your, you know, everything that you've known your whole life. And so you come here and that workplace becomes a very important system for you um, and it, it, it becomes a containing system for you so if it's not a healthy system um, and if it's one of those clinics where they're just seeing patients after patient and there isn't a lot of team and collegiality which is something that was super super important for, for me and, um, and Tara where we wanted community within uh, within our clinic we wanted friendship we wanted um, you know we wanted to be able to be with each other not just work work work. Um, and, and I think that is what differentiates the lighthouse from other practices or hospital jobs is that we, um, we really have a strong focus on internal community as well as our passion for serving the external community. Uh, so people are asking about interning at the lighthouse. Um, interning at the lighthouse is possible. Um, we do ask that, you know, long term interns, so you can come in for a shadow one, two weeks, it's fine. But if you're looking for interning at the lighthouse, then um, that does not count towards your um, uh, training hours. Just not yet. Fingers crossed, we're hopefully going to get there. Um, but it does count towards just your 
experience. We had a lot of people come to us once they qualified for a master's in psychology. So our interns right now are, they have a master's degree, but they cannot see people. They, they help us co-facilitate groups. They help us, you know, work on research. They help us put together presentations. They help us do screenings for our, you know, different kinds of cases and triaging, but they cannot see clinical uh, clients at this point, um, not until we have a training license. So you can get experience. And what I would recommend is to apply. Um, I'm going to put this here in the chat for everyone. You apply at intern at lighthousearabia.com. Mm -hmm. That's where you would apply a strong CV, guys. Don't send the typos. We notice. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions you see, Tara? Um, I saw some questions around locums. Um, do we do that, the equivalent of what happens in the NHS? We don't have a, a really an established locum system here. Um, and uh, you, you might have different types of contracts where you're brought in on a project or something like this. But when you're working with a clinical population here, typically, um, you're, you don't have these short term um, contracts in Dubai. Anything uh, else? Anything else? I think people were saying, what's the difference between, I think, uh, 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 attestation and, and um, equalization. Uh, equalization. So attestation is, as uh, Dr. Sally has said, it's really basically the authentication of your degrees um, in from uh, your the consulates or the embassies in your own home country and the UAE consulate in your home country. That's authentication um, that this, uh, whatever degree or whatever you have is bona fide um, and that your country recognizes it and then the UAE does. Equival, it, it, how do you call it? Equalization is different. It is the UAE saying, according to their benchmark of what an undergraduate or a master's degree is, they will then look at your degrees and, and make sure that is equivalent to the benchmark and basic level um, in, in terms of courses, credits, etc. Um, and they will also be looking at whether they um, believe that the institution that has issued this uh, degree is also an accredited institution. So they have their processes. So um, authentication and um, equalization are two very separate things. Mm, anything else? Mm -hmm. It says, I hear you refer to psychologists a lot. Are licensed clinical social workers able to do counseling therapy in Dubai? Um, yes, they would be licensed by CDA or DHCC with the note section for DH um, under DHA under DHCC. So um, we have a clinical social worker um, who is one of our, you know, top team. Um, and so uh, she's a director of mental health first aid with the lighthouse. So it's definitely. Um, it's definitely possible for clinical social workers to work here. And they would be making um, the same amount of money as a master's level psychologist. Um, and so there, there isn't a lot of differentiation between that, as long as you have had training in therapy. Mm -hmm. So if you are a good employer, you will definitely be checking whether or not this person had counseling and therapy experience. Um, and then if they did, then it would be uh, seen as you being able to provide that type of um, work. Um, no licenses can be transferred, guys. You have to apply to the different bodies mm -hmm. um, all separately and in different ways. Um, and so um, not, just because you have DHCC doesn't mean you automatically can go somewhere else in DHA. Uh, you actually have to apply to all different licenses in the mm -hmm. same way. So I'm, I've been licensed with DHA for now 14 years. And I, because we're opening a clinic in DHCC, I had to go apply for a DHCC license and go through the whole process there. Mm -hmm. So nothing was transferred, even though they're licensed by the same yeah. DHA. Um, I just wanted to answer the question about our bachelors always necessary. And I wanted to draw Chrysanthemum to this question as well. In, uh, it is my belief that 
uh, if you are looking for a psychologist licensing, then you need a bachelor's in psychology as your base degree. Um, however, for example, if you were a clinical social worker um, and you're going to work as a counsellor, then you would not require a, a bachelor's in psychology, an undergraduate as your base degree. But all the other um, uh, psychology licences, yes. And um, actually for DHA, this was what I wanted to ask you, um, Prasanth, for DHA, they require the four-year bachelor's. Is that not right? And a two-year master's. So the bachelor's has to be at least three years, right? Three yeah. Yeah, and, and the, the master's is really important. Um, in many parts of the world, there are one year master's, which I would call a taught master's. And you go through academic courses and it's really teaching and you might do a thesis. What is required um, when you do a two year um, is that there has been supervised either practicum or internship within it where you, your clinical practice has been reviewed and there's been oversight. That's what the licensing bodies are is, is really critically looking for. Okay, guys, um, I have a lot <laughs> questions here and we're going to probably do something similar once a month and what we're going to do is we're going to take all of the questions because we, we definitely didn't get to all 84 of them and now I've got to run to my son's school <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and so uh, we will be building some of these questions into the next presentation and then also I'll be answering some of them on Instagram so I would really encourage everyone to follow um, at Lighthouse Arabia LinkedIn, as well as um, at Lighthouse Arabia LinkedIn, as well as Instagram. And then if you don't follow me, which I'm sure you do, because that's where we promoted this, um, then <laughs> you can also follow that. But I will be really answering a lot of these very specific questions. Guys, it is a little bit of a process, to be honest. It's not easy, but it is so rewarding. Um, and, you know, I always tell everyone that the day I get bored, and Tara has known me my whole time in Dubai. I, I met Tara <laughs> Um, that, you know, the day I get bored of Dubai uh, or bored of uh, my uh, work is the day I will stop. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you there has not been a single day where I said, I don't want to do this work. I'm bored or I don't find it engaging or I don't find it interesting or, or um, it has been you know, it has really kept me on my toes, almost a little bit too much on my toes. Um, I'm not a ballerina, um, but, um, but yeah. it, you know, and, and the colleagues you have and the, and then the people you meet, it's really, really a very special place to work, um, uh, the UAE and a very, very special place to live. Um, and so, and, and you can see that there's three panelists from three different parts mm -hmm. of the world. They work together in the same place. And so it's a very, very rich, um, place. I really, really would encourage you guys to consider it. And if you guys have any questions, we are available to you guys, and we'd be very, very happy to answer them. Send them through onto LinkedIn or Instagram, and then join us next time to be continued on our licensing journey. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Good luck.